This is one of those AI articles. Oh, I hate the AI writing. Is there a Dr. Stone season four release date? The anime series Dr. Stone has captivated audiences for three seasons, chronicling the unique story of Senku Ishiga. Scroll down, pass an ad. Although there is no official release date. Okay, you finally did answer. There has been information. It's expected to come at the end of 2024 or at the beginning of 2025. Expected by who? We do not know. This Hello, my name is Rico Bajardo. Welcome to the Dr. Stone panel. Um, soon, I bet, very soon maybe, you might see an Aaron Disney role in here. Uh, you might know me from such things as Mirio Togata and My Hero Academia. Um, uh, Benny Maru, in that time I got reincarnated as a slime. I play Yuichi Isagi, the uh, protagonist in Blue Lock. Um, Nozel Silva in Black Clover. Um, I'm a bunch of redheads in like Fire Emblem. I play Pandreo and also uh, Ferdinand von Eger, rest in peace Billy, I picked up for him after he passed. Uh, but there's uh, a lot of games and things that I'm working on recently, and uh, it's an exciting time, you guys, for anime and games. There's a huge confluence for me. I'm also a gamer, just so you guys know. So there's uh, anything you guys want to talk about, I'm like happy to. These mics aren't working, so I'm just going to do this. Um, okay, good. I was like, was that feedback? I can hear the my ears like I'm like about to blow you guys up anyways um yeah so a little bit about me uh background I guess just for funsies I know this isn't a Rico Fajardo panel but I went to undergrad studying musical theater at University of California Irvine uh got my master's at SMU in Dallas Texas uh, I was going to move back to LA but while I was working uh in America at American Players Theater in the woods of Wisconsin uh I got a call that said you're booked for uh, an anime I was like oh sweet I'd love to do that that'd be fun to do that once it's like 2011, and then the long road of anime that proceeded to follow that. So yeah, it's, it's been a wild path. Um, and the, the Genesis story was, uh, I was on set for uh, a movie that I was working on with my pal, Brina Palencia. She plays uh, CL and Black Butler. She's Mineta, my hero, uh, beautiful South American actress. And I was playing guitar after a long day of, of, of shooting a, a movie. And she's like, oh, you sing? Do you want to come audition for Funimation? I was like, what's that? Um, and that was, again, yeah, the beginning of a, of a long, long tale of, uh, of, of working on the end. Um, yeah. I kind of, I, I usually, in my mind, I was going to, like, start, because I haven't talked to Aaron in a while, so I was going to be like, let's just make this talk about Dr. Stone and where are you at? What's, like, your thing? But do uh, you guys have any, I guess, burning questions for me right now? Anything in your mind about Dr. Stone and or stuff you've been watching and or playing recently? You guys play any RTSs? real time strategy games? Yeah, like, because that's literally what Dr. Stone is, and Senku is totally, like, a collecting... Civ 6. Thank you. Yes, Civ 6. He's like, uh, I like Starcraft, so he's like an SCV. He's like, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, Report for duty! Just coming out and, like, mining ore. That's literally Taiju. Whenever you get these moments in the show... Welcome in, guys! Um, whenever you get these moments in the show where Senku's like, I have to accomplish something big. Taiju, go collect rocks! <laughs> he's like, yes! You got him, Senku! He's like, just starts going... And whenever you play these games, you don't think about, you know, your little person, worker, just going to town, or the one orc that's like, hey, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Aaron Dismuke! Thank you, Seth. You're welcome. I appreciate you. Did he guide you, too? He did. He sure put me. <laughs> I don't think these are... Anyway. But yeah. I gave my short intro... <sighs> Even if I danced a while longer, you would save the closer I slide. Come. Uh, yeah, I did an intro of, uh, of like things you're working on, who you are, and, you know. So, I don't know if you want to follow suit or you can do whatever. Yeah. Uh, I'm current. I, my name's Aaron Dismute. I uh, work with this guy in My Hero Academia um, in uh, Dr. Stone. I'm, I'm Tom McKee and uh, Sinku. Uh, and then also in Blue Lock, uh, I'm, I'm Chiguri. I just joined his team. We're going to go all, all the way until I break my leg and they shoot me out back. No! <laughs> I'm already dreading that episode. Does anyone watch Blue Lock? Y'all, y'all, like literally Chiguri is my favorite character because uh, he, hey, I don't want to spoil his app, but like it's really emotional. And I'm like, ah, because yeah. you know he is. He's got to get hurt. You he's can't go home. He's got to go home. Yeah, once, once you. Like it's it's like a rule that they talk about in writing for uh, theater is if you put a gun on the desk, 
someone has to shoot it eventually. Sure. Um, yeah, check yeah, out just hanging hang over the... Yeah, so when you have a character who's been told that if you ever hurt your leg again, you will never run again. They're going to hurt their leg. And it's a battle royale. Where How they go all in. and fall out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> every single F. Uh-huh. So it's going to be good. It's going to be good for us to stretch out our hearts. It's a fun show. You can, <laughs> you can check it out. Fun. Yeah. Um, just watch the movie, episode Nagi. Yeah. I had so much fun watching. We were, we were the villains. Fun. Yeah. That was really cool. It was cool. Uh, and it had like a little, like, uh, an unexpected moral to it. I thought, I kind of d- disliked Nagi instinct- instinctively. Uh, a whim, like just rather get rather. Yeah, because he's talented and doesn't work. Yeah. You know? It's a weird trope to it. <laughs> You're like, oh yeah, just like me. I get it. Everything comes <laughs> super easy. Boring. Life's so boring and so easy. I'm like, not relatable at all. Yeah. Like, I didn't get in through nepotism to this job. Wait, sweats. Okay. Shit. He, that's why I don't like him. I see myself. Oh no. It's too real. It was you all along. You were Nagi. No. Yeah. You're anyway. not Nagi. Sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's learning to work hard. And I eventually learns to work hard. Yeah, he gets he's a cha- he becomes he uh, gets a challenge from Isagi and all of them, and learns that that is fun. Being challenged can be fun. Yeah. Tell your kids. That's the, that's the lesson. <laughs> but it's Doctor Stone panel. Oh, this Blue is Doctor Stone. Lock, Blue Lock, Sorry. Tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> in Doctor Stone, uh, I, has everybody seen it? Yes, I watched it. Can't confirm. <laughs> Up to season one. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, she almost read the whole way, but she stopped. Oh. Yeah, so. Why did she stop? Um, well, at the time I was reading it every week when the manga released. Yeah. And the last one I read was a big reveal. I won't spoil it for everybody here. But, um, and then I was like, oh, freaking out about it. I'm like, you know what, I'm going to wait till it finishes and then I'll read it all at once. But then I kind of got out of anime and I only recently got back into it. So I need to go back to it. You could wait for the anime to come out. Got one season left. Oh, uh, oh they're light. They're, they work now. Hell yeah. Hello. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, nice. Uh, well, this changes everything. <laughs> Thanks, right, I guess. Oh, I mean that's probably fine. We can project. Uh, is this, this is extra nice? Do you guys? Is that know. an okay volume for y'all? Yep. This is like mixed for you. This is a bespoke experience for y'all. How's, okay. How is this for y'all? Is this okay too? Yeah. Do you like okay. this? Wonder. Do you like this? <laughs> yeah, you is like that this. Nice? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You gotta like take them when they take them away. <laughs> Damn it. I guess season four, 2025. Is that the deal? I think so. I, I always get nervous when people ask me like, is it coming? And I'm like, did they announce it? Because they usually tell us last. Be like, come on, you know, tell me, Aaron, when's, when's the new Dr. Stone? And you're like, I gotta Google it. Because literally, if it's out there, I can talk about it. And like, rarely do we ever, I think, even episode Nagi, like when it was about to be released, we're like, we don't know when, like, and then they're like, it's coming tomorrow, hurry up and dump it. We're like, what? <laughs> so, yeah. Huh? This is one of those AI articles. Oh, I hate the AI writing. Is there a Dr. Stone season four release date? The anime series Dr. Stone has captivated audiences for three seasons, chronicling the unique story of Senku Ishiga. Scroll down, pass an ad. Although there is no official release date, okay, you finally did answer. There has been information. It's expected to come at the end of 2024 or at the beginning of 2025. Expected by who? We do not know. This is like a recipe where you're like, just tell me the recipe. I don't want to know. All of your history with spaghetti, like <laughs> I've actually been driven to use AI for a recipe by all of the AI articles that won't tell me the goddamn recipe. <laughs> you know, so like you try to use Google, and then you're like, "This is, this is just pages of bullshit." And then you're like, "Well, screw it. I'll just ask ChatGPT what's a good pesto recipe," and it does it. And then a chef somewhere dies. Oh no! <laughs> like someone's. Someone's granny, whose whole life was about putting these recipes online, and she was really connecting with people. And then one she of the robo chefs is like, <laughs> online. <laughs> it gains power for everyone that dies. A new robot chef is born. Yeah, that's. I the feel new. like this could be a like we could do a Peter Pan, Tinkerbell kind of. I don't know. There's oh no, she's there's dead. fertile ground here. Okay, 
We got to write it though. Yeah. Um, Doctor Stone, you guys. <laughs> right. <laughs> Who's your favorite Doctor Stone character? And be honest. Don't. It's don't Su- ask. It's Sukasa. <laughs> it's Sukasa. Yeah. Like actually? Yeah, it is. Or like his moral grounds? You guys know who Sukasa is? Yeah. Plays by our pal Ian. He has a lovely opportunity to reboot the world. <laughs> I, I love a person with a strong uh, moral ethic who nonetheless yeah. does some evil shit. Like, a lot of villains ultimately are hypocrites. Sukasa, for all his failings, is not a hypocrite. Well, he's not a hypocrite until now we're going to have him working side by side with Ryusui. And if he's not a hypocrite, he would strangle Ryusui in his sleep. <laughs> because Ryusui is everything he despises, right? Yeah, money. One Let's thing we money. <laughs> like, mm, spear. <laughs> Literally just, yeah, just reinvented debt. <laughs> and oil. He gets all the oil money. Oh, my God. And his fingers are, like, blackened with, with the, the oil. Like, that's his, his, oh, that's uh, his thing. tattoo thing. Oh, my God. I didn't the, think about the blackened, that. greedy fingers. That's horrible. Yeah. I didn't think about like that. Like they've been soaked in oil. That's Ryusui? Yeah, I'm texting Cliff right now. <laughs> Who knows? He knows Ryusui's a bad man. Dang. Uh, I mean, no, Ryusui is also great to have around and like a loyal person. Uh, and he's greedy for things that are reasonable to be greedy about. Because they're part of everything. I yes. Guess. He's like predictable. Like, yeah, that's, that's the thing that makes it kind of like safe. Suka so, like, like during that first interaction in season one. Again, it's hard, you guys. I, hopefully, we don't spoil things for you. But this is like at the beginning, so hopefully, this is okay. But when they they bring out Sukasa, and that's Senku. Senku's like, we need to bring. We're, we're like getting attacked by like right. animals, lions. We're being chased by lions. We need the strongest like high school primate <laughs> high schooler. <laughs> you know what we need? The strongest high schooler out there. I'm like, Senku, what, what, I, we could, why not get, <laughs> invent some kind like, of... Look at that physique. <laughs> so There's no time to argue. He's Bring him back. back. He's got abs on abs. <laughs> Didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> um, and then when they free him, he's like, oh, yeah, we're all buddies. And, like, for a moment, there's peace. Yeah. There's, like, this lovely trinity of, of, of them all just broing down, having a great time. <laughs> and then he's like, old people. No. <laughs> Old people, am I right? <laughs> like, they, oh, what? They displease me. Man. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, I guess that's his, his big uh, logical fallacy, is that he thinks old people are all set in their ways, which is not always true. Some are capable of change. <laughs> we have to believe <laughs> we that. We have to believe it. For Sukasa, though, like in that moment, yeah, I remember being like, hell yeah, change the world, let's go, let's do it. But then, uh, I was actually just talking a moment ago with Seth, we were talking about how uh, Senku, if like it was a D&D like, alignment, I feel like he's like chaotic neutral. He's not really like good. Or do you think he's evil? And not evil like evil, I mean like selfish. Do you know what I mean? What do you guys think? Do you think Senku is like evil? <laughs> <laughs> Because certainly he's, I, I would, I would say that Senku is not good by traditional standards of like doing the right thing all the time. Senku makes choices that are quite selfish at times that are like yeah. for the good of people. But he's like, yeah. <laughs> like, what is that face and why are you making it? You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I would say he's probably a chaotic neutral. Chaotic neutral? Yeah. He's chaotic willing to do anything. anything. Sounds about right. And this is fun because he will do super lawful good things, such as yes, vow yes. never to kill anyone. Like, he has yet to kill anyone in these multiple wars he's had, but he makes a pure... The arguments that he makes in favor of this, you could present to an actual psychopath, and they would be like, okay, yeah, that makes sense, right? Like, he has solely rational, selfish reasons for doing the right thing. And I'm pretty here for that. I love the idea that if somebody does bad, it's just because they don't know any better. That's another thing I'd like to believe. So. On the other, the flip side, well, not the flip side, but, like, I was saying earlier, asking if they played RTSs and how Taiji is, like, the gatherer. He's a, someone play, he plays Civ, right? Civilization? Like, having the, you know, Zukonda, like, whatever, like, they're just kind of, like, mining away. That's Taiji. He's yeah. out there gathering, like, with purpose and unceasing stamina. He's like, I'm out here gathering rocks for you. Gold, let's go, zug, zug. He's doing it, right? Like, that's his jam. 
But like when when Suka starts killing people, Taishu is one of the first people like that's wrong. Stop. No. Like it's just not right. Why are you doing? There's no reason. Like it doesn't make any sense to him. Um, which I don't think. I guess Taishu is pretty pacifist. I think. He just wants to grow, like, uh, little spoilers, I guess. He has a little, like, farmer hat. He's, like, really good at growing crops and stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's nice. Of course, because he can freaking literally, he can just plow, plow and hoe all day long. <laughs> um, but, but I also think he's got, like, a, an empathy and a, a very caring quality that helps, too. Like, he probably, I, it's it's like on a on a instinctual level, he understands a lot of things that most people don't that Sinku understands because he has, like, gone through all these logical steps Analytical, to get there. Yeah. Like, Sinku's like, killing is a bad idea because uh, everyone has a talent. Even if you haven't seen it, everyone is useful to you in some way if you can convince them to work for you. Uh, <laughs> also, if you kill them and they have friends, their friends will come after you, and you don't want to start this cycle of revenge. And so Sinku has all these rational reasons, and Taisha's just like, that's wrong. So, you know, Sinku's like the soil pH, da 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 and Taiju might be like, I bet, I bet they'd like some rotten plant stuff. Because that's what happens in the forest, right? Is the plants eat dead plants? Yeah, I'll throw some of this stuff, you know? It's very simple and, like, heart-led. Like, if, if Sinku's, like, analytical, and, yeah, I love how he justifies all the choices through, because it seems like he's good. Seems like lawful good, but then he's literally like, "Guess what we get to do now? Now that we did this thing, because it's couched inside of science. Like science is a very neutral sort of thing. It, it can be used for anything, right?" Um, which brings me to Suika. You know, I love Suika. <laughs> and Suika's best girl. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, did you read that? Did you read? Did you? Oh yeah. Anyway, sorry, what? Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Man, it's hard to talk about this show. If like, uh, just out of curiosity, who's like, who's only just started the show? Oh no! I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's gonna be more spoilers. I'm sorry. You don't even know who Suika is. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Suika, Suika gets to another cool appeal of the show. Um, so Suika is a little girl uh, who has a giant watermelon that she wears over her head because it focuses her vision and allows her to see a little bit better. What she needs is glasses. And ultimately, when we give her the glasses, we just stick some lenses into her watermelon holes. And the reason we do this is because it is crucial to her character design that she be able to retract her torso, arms, and legs into the watermelon and then spin like Sonic. And she becomes super fast. Travel mode. She goes travel mode, yeah. So it's really fun, because this is a show where they research it so hard, and you can get the Mythbusters to be like, yeah, no, that's how that would work. And then right after they say, the show is really doing attention to detail, and it really cares about the laws of physics, this little girl is going to disappear into a watermelon, and go, <laughs> sitting trees flying in her wake. Um, and that's kind of every character, at times, is going to uh, appear to break the laws of physics. Like Taiju with some of the work, his feats of endurance and, and strength. Oh, man. Some of them will break the laws of physics, but that's just to give you, the, I think it's like a presentational like um, way of giving you the feeling of what it's like to watch that person. Oh man, I love the glasses, man, the glasses. I have really horrible eyesight, you guys. <laughs> I got like PRK, a photo of Dr. Caritano, me to fix my eyes. I could only see like right here. Um, and I remember, uh, well, first off, when you do that, you shouldn't do, like, both eyes. I did both. I was like, whatever, just get it done. And uh, they were like, you should probably do one at a time. That way, like, you know, you can see. I was like, it's fine. It'll heal. And, like, my buddy will take me home. You got to have good friends, you guys. <laughs> when you do something like that. Because I got both my eyes uh, lasered. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, actually, and David's in town. It's so funny. My book, good buddy, David Matz. He was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, here, here, here's a sandwich. And, like, I, like, reach out, and it's just, like, a shoe. And, like, all of my, I'm with, like, five other roommate dudes who are, like, <laughs> it's, like, giggling all around me. I'm, like, guys, I'm serious. I'm hungry. <laughs> I can't use my phone. I can't do anything. And I'm, like, just reaching for people to hurt them and grab them. Like, stop messing with me. Um, but anyway, all that said, yeah, having poor vision as, like, a kid, I remember, like, just being, uh, I think I've told you this story before, but, like, not knowing... I uh, being so embarrassed about my vision, like I would just like guess at like math problems on the, uh, in the and I was such an introverted kid, I was in the back. Yeah. So they'd be like, what's the answer, Rico? And I'm like, oh, that's a six, seven. 
I'm like, that's wrong. You're not paying attention. And literally, I can't see crap. It's all just blurs. But I was such an introverted kid. I didn't want to, like, say that I couldn't see because it was, like, admitting weakness. And then I remember <laughs> I finally got, like, glasses. At, or uh, Before this moment, rewind just a, a stair, step before that. My teacher's like, all right, you're in trouble because you're in the back and you're, you need to learn better, so come up front. And I was like, oh, dope, yeah, 82, 387, blah, blah, Like, wait, you're getting everything right. It's your vision? <laughs> You just need glasses. And I come from a pretty, pretty humble, humble family. So like my dad's like, oh man, glasses, it's pretty expensive. You sure you need them? <laughs> and I'm like, I, I think so. I think I might need them. And so I got these big old boom. And like, man, immediately gifted students. So I was like, yeah. But I thought, but like sweet as, sweet as track, dude, like made me so emotional watching this person who just figures this is how life is. Yeah. It must be this way. You must survive, right? Because that is what life has presented you. And then to have this one little piece of glass literally change everything. Um, it's incredible. It's incredible. Science is, science is cool. <laughs> <laughs> we should, do you want to? Yeah, let them ask things. Yeah, did you guys, if you wanted to, it looks like there's a microphone there. I'm assuming it's working. So if you want to ask a question, please feel free. Uh, Aaron and I have chatted for a while, so we can also like just talk. But like, you're welcome to come up and ask a question if you got one. Yeah. Again, I could probably, I think I, I can prep this for both of us. We both play a lot of games contextually. So if, you, if you've mm. played something cool, please share that. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Seth, you got one? Oh, man, no, isn't it live? Okay, so just yell at us. Yeah, you can do that too. Or you can um, write something down and then walk up and pass it here. <laughs> Ooh, what civ? Civilization. I mean, you can play as Gandhi, right? Yeah. Gandhi's pretty cool. <laughs> Gandhi's really cool. Uh, check, check. Thank you. I think it would work with the, the pacifist angle. Yeah. Um, like the primarily nonviolent resistance thing. Uh, and I can't think of who like the big scientist character is. Yeah, so, I can't remember either. I mean, the other way, the other thing is like, okay. Yeah, they're pacifists, but they're definitely dominionists, right? Like they're expanding and uh, exploiting all these resources. So you could also see them playing as like England. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm thinking about, I didn't play much of Civil Civilization. I played a lot of Age of Empires. Um, and I remember doing that cheat code where you can bring in a soldier with a laser gun. He's like, <laughs> And literally, like all these like guys on horseback, like run! <laughs> like, they got like fifty people, and one dude's like, da, 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 da. and I remember thinking, this is so much fun to look at all these cave people running away. And I thought of Doctor Stone right away, and I was like, that's what Senku's trying to do. Senku's like, yeah, yeah, we need a tank. What if we? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know that if we get weapons, you guys want clubs and stuff. And freaking uh, Kohaku is like, yeah, I'm like really good with knives. Like, yeah, that's cool. Here's a tank. <laughs> It's like command and conquer. Da, 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 da. Like, ah! Just people running away, getting squashed. Oh man, uh, that's sorry. That's all I can see in my brain right now. Is this just reminded me of? So there's an arc where we invent the katana as a step up against the uh, spear, and I just want everyone to know, for the record, wouldn't work. A sword is a sidearm. Um, if somebody has, if, if 10 guys have a sword and 10 guys uh, have spears, the spears win every time. They just wreck them. Sword is like what you bring when you're like having to go into like a court. And so you're just going to bring your pistol kind of thing. A sword is like the pistol of ancient times. Uh, unless you're Roman and you have that giant shield. That's different. Um, one does begin to wonder at this point. I guess maybe the samurai were able to have. I'm betting samurai had spears as their main weapon. Too. Oh yeah, partisans, totally. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then horseback, obviously, like artillery and stuff too. And I'm thinking, like, man, in the zombie survival guide, spear's yeah. the best weapon. Yes. Pointy stick. I'm safe over here. You're over there. <laughs> you know, sword. You got to get close. Don't get me wrong. Michonne's dope and everything. Like we love seeing that. But I'm like, that's dangerous, bro. You can get bit. Also, oh, in the, eye. the yeah. amount of blood GG. that gets into those people's mouths, ears, oh, eyes, yeah. noses, skin. 20 days later, when the blood drop goes in the dude, I'm like, that's what I'm talking about, you guys. There's like a lot of like flack that's happening here. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm going to wear scuba gear. Scuba gear. Like, 
that's about when I get into the zombie apocalypse. Scuba gear? Scuba yeah. gear smart. Scuba nice. Skin tight. Oh, that's a thing? It's all 100, yeah. It's, it's an anime for that. Nice. I, I thought the, like, f uh, phone books around the... Like, that's yeah. smart. Like, Dunk paper? Tape. Oh, dude. World's best... Uh, sorry we moved to zombies here a bit, you guys. But, like, um, <laughs> I just thought about, like, weapons and, like, really good weapons that you could just make pretty readily and easily. Um, and also, like, the, the height advantage. Like, those hidden things like that. But, um... Sheets, like uh, uh, regular bed sheets. So, like, say your significant other, whatever roommate, someone in the house turns into a zombie. Rawr, right? You're like, oh no! And you ask that question: Would you kill me? Would you what? Like, no, I'm gonna wrap you up in a sheet, like a spider. I put, I put, I, I empty, I empty the pillowcase. I do that, right? So that's like, and now you're just kind of like, you know, you're just like, right? <laughs> Nullify, yeah, yeah, right? Get sheet. Rap, man, that's annoying as hell. And then they can't move. Like, it doesn't take a lot. And sure, they might have whatever rage virus strength. Wrap them a couple more times. That's it, done. That's it. It's, yeah. Yeah, thank you. You know what I'm talking about? The pranks where you shrink out. I mean, if you're lucky and they're turning, I'd do that. But, like, you know what I mean? Like, hey, just, we'll be right back, you know? Because, man, that's a crappy feeling if, like, you know, someone like Senku comes up with a cure and they're like, ah. Oh, uh, nope, nope. I cocooned everyone in my house, and I'm going to cure them now, and they'll be grateful. <laughs> what if everybody makes it back, but, like, there, there's a lot of brain damage. Like, oh, everybody no. is curable, but... They're, like, different? But they're quite different. Oh, man. Well, that's sad. Maybe they'll, <laughs> I'm sure they'll all be a lot sweeter, you know? Well, maybe... Well, could it go the other way? Maybe they have some, like, arcane knowledge after turning and coming back? They become the first vamps. Oh, they know. They know. They know. That's the fucking the red hand on Skyrim. They know. They've seen the other side. Mm -hmm. But they cool. won't tell you. All they'll tell you is it's really great. That's scary, dude. They like it. They're like, it's a secret, but you should totally die. Like, you should try it. They're like, you think it's really bad, but it feels good. <laughs> They're like, it's really good. They're like, They're like oh. Really? <laughs> like, that's weird. That's weird. I don't like it. Oh you man! Wanna, like, I could kill. I could kill you now. <laughs> Just a little bit. I'll bring you back. How do you kill someone a little bit? <laughs> you brought me back. I'll bring you back. Yeah. Oh, I got man, this is a good sketch. right here. Oh my gosh, that's wild. I'm not allowed to tell you. I'm sorry. Zombies. <laughs> It's the secret zombie, uh, yeah, code that you're not allowed to say. That's why the zombies like kill everybody. Wait, why? What do you mean? It's because it's so good. <laughs> Are you dead? <laughs> They're like, <laughs> They're like the afterlife is better than you thought. Oh, Everyone's invited. <laughs> Get over here. <laughs> I don't know how we got the zombies. This is great, you guys. Um, any other, any questions out there? Hopping at all? Really, anything at all? Yeah, yeah. you go. Back. What's your favorite game to be overpowered? Favorite game to be overpowered in? Roguelikes, for sure. Because it feels so earned and also scary. Uh, there's a game called Noida. Oh, Noida. You uh, are a wizard who is trying to turn the whole planet into gold. <laughs> you don't know that that's your goal and until you win. And the first time you win, everything just... <laughs> turns into gold, and you realize that everyone who was fighting you along the way, like, they all, they had, like, communities and uh, homes, and, like, they, there was a bar that some of them would hang out in that you fight through, and you thought they were evil monsters, but no, they were trying to not get turned into gold. <laughs> but that game has a whole physics engine where um, there's toxic stuff that will damage you when you touch it, ice, if you breathe ice vapors, You'll freeze to death, you can catch on fire, burn to death. Uh, stuff will sometimes explode from off the screen and kill you. Well, just because fair. shit's going down in other parts of the map. You can't see it though, that's not fair. So <laughs> often you pick up a wand and it looks super good. It's got all these, like it's got a lightning bolt, it's got a brimstone explosion, it creates an alcohol mist that you know you could light on fire later. And so you pick up this wand and you're like, cool, let's try this out. And you just blow yourself up instantly. <laughs> oh. you know? Mist of lightning. Because um, it's, it's RNG on the item, right? Yeah. Got it, got it. You can re-work uh, the wands between every level. Ah. So there's okay. some engineering cool. aspect to it. But when you get a really good wand, you are both thrilled and terrified because you know you could die any second, <laughs> even though you're so strong. 
So you're like, this is my run. This is my chance to win. When you said the world, you're trying to turn the world into gold? Yeah. It made me think of how in Final Fantasy, I think it's 10, when like, you know, Big Bad comes down, Sin comes down, and you're like, oh my God, it's so hard. Or I'm sorry, it's like the, the extra boss. It's like not Final Sin, I forget what it's called. There's really extra stuff beyond the game where it's the difficulties ratcheted up like crazy. Um, and if you've just been grinding in the game, as you do, you get money. But at that point in the game, money's useless, right? You don't use money for anything except when you give Yojimbo, the summoner, money, he goes, well, I'll deal damage equal to how much money you give me. So it's funny to me that the final boss, World Eater, comes down, and then you like draw your blade, and you're like, hey, you just cut a check to Yojimbo, and he's like, and the world, he's like, you beat him with money! Like, it's the most American thing, I like, it's amazing. Yeah, but but uh, when, I, when you said the gold thing, that made me think of that, but, um, yeah, yeah. I like being overpowered. I guess I don't like being overpowered in games because I like the challenge. I like the challenge of any game. But it is very gratifying in like an MMO to be like uh, a really strong rogue and I'm going ham and I'm on top, top of the damage meters and then our tank folds like a clown and then I'm like, oh no. And so like the big freaking boss looks at me and I'm like, evasion. And I'm literally just blink tanking this fool. But because like my gear is so good, I'm like just barely, like I get hit and it's like, ugh, healed, healed. <laughs> like, there's no room for error, but it's only because I put in so much time, you know what I mean? That like, I wouldn't say I'm overpowered, but it's it's a very gratifying feeling when you have a group of people like relying on you and you're like coming in clutch and everyone's like, what the, what's happening? Why are we dead? Just keep going, shoot her. Everyone's like busting all their cooldowns, like, because you know, people are trying to determine whether or not it's a white, is it a white? Are we leaving? Can I go, can I go to the bathroom? Can I pee? And it's like, oh no, Rico's still in it. Everything could come back. You know? I love that feeling. Anyway. That's good. Oh, thank you for the gamer question. <laughs> what else? What else you got? Any other questions? Yeah. So we want to go like, have you played like um, Slay the Spire? Yes, I love Slay the Spire. <laughs> um, he had a, a streamer pal that like that's his name. Right? Yeah, my buddy, uh, his his name is uh, Sneaky Teak. He sort of like built his. Uh, streamer career around Slay the Spire. I, he's got a lot of content on YouTube still. He doesn't stream right now, but yeah. Uh, great game. I love deck builders as well, just in general. What's that? What's that deck builder where it's like, oh, it's like fourth wall breaking? Oh, oh, uh, the immersive theater one. Uh, 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 inscription. Yeah, Inscription. If you like Slay the Spire, Inscription's so good. You've been kidnapped by a uh, hobo god. <laughs> Leshy. 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 Leshy the hobo god has you in the back of his uh, cabin in the woods and you're like taped to a chair basically and he's like we're going to play a game and he has like a like a wooden like a wicker stag head uh, and uh, you got to play the game you got to you got to beat him but don't beat him too fast or he'll kill you uh, but if you lose he'll also kill you um, it's a punishing game <laughs> it's a very yeah Death is part of the story, um, but it is. I love the meta theatrics of it because I was telling them earlier about immersive theater um, and how I'm on, on this kick of it. And inscription is one of the things they mention in a lot of these podcasts and things that it it breaks the fourth wall. Um, remember when we, we streamed Doki Doki Literature Club? Yeah. And no one, in my little stream community, like no one told me, like don't tell, no one tell any of them anything. And Aaron, Sarah, none of us knew. So we went into that thing. Have you guys played Doki Doki Literature Club? Man, and we were like narrating. We're like, this is fun. Let's read. And I'm like, oh no, <laughs> this is a hard journey to read. <laughs> um, yeah, I think we made Sarah the, the, the boy and then we were the girls. I think <laughs> that was, so, yeah. holy cow, dude. But like that, that uh, the meta, meta theatrics of the game where it's like, you need to destroy her file. Yeah. And you go into the game folder and you delete it. She's like, I know you tried to delete me. And I'm like, <laughs> I wouldn't do that to you, Monica. <laughs> Those jump scares, they got me real good. Like almost every time I was like, you and I curse. <laughs> Son of There's a game called One Shot that I super recommend. A someone knows. What's that? What's One Shot? One Shot is like Undertale meets Doki Doki Literature Club. I still haven't finished Undertale, dude. Ugh. I just listened to the soundtrack because I like <laughs> It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> I do recommend finishing it. It's uh, Undertale was like changed my life. I, I like that game so much. But one uh, shot, one shot, one shot 
is it, it, it also involves some fourth wall breaking stuff. Um, the game is going to, within the, the opening narrative, it's going to have found out your name um, from your computer, and it will address you by name. Um, and you, like, give it a permission to do that at the beginning. But uh, Holy cow. That's cool. That <laughs> sort of is a tone setter for what it's like. Uh, generally, it's, it's uh, Undertale-level graphics, so you're looking down, but you're, like, having a conversation with the little character that you're controlling you're really guiding him um yeah and his name's nico and he's a little cat boy who's not a cat don't call him a cat he hates that uh and he has uh, a light bulb and he needs to put it in a light tower because the the lighthouse with that light bulb is this world's uh sun and the world is dying because it lost its sun so nico has to go in there and uh, give them a new source of light so that life can thrive again. This sounds nice. Yeah, should totally go fine. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I got a Steam Deck, so I'm, I'm going to put it on there. Oh, you should do it. Oh, it's real. It's, it's handy, man. I can play anywhere now. Nice. I've been playing Darkest Dungeon. Mm -hmm. My brother mm -hmm. told me to play that. And uh, letting people die hurts. Yeah. It's like any time I play a game like Fable where they're like, make a choice. Do you want to save the people? The, the, do you want all the money or do you want to save your best friend, the Daug? And I was like, what do you mean? I'm <laughs> like, I got to pick one? So I did the lawful good and I saved everyone. But then literally this big old thing just leaves. And, you know, you, you're missing your dog and you're like just in the world like, this sucks. So I went and I saved the dog and then everyone's like, yeah, you selfish bastard. <laughs> and then I got all the money and that was even worse. Like, oh, you're super selfish. I'm like, there's no good ending. There's no good way to do this. But um, yeah, with Darkest Dungeon, you literally like send these these people into the dungeon to go like get treasure and make your town stronger. But they slowly go insane, and you can try to cure them, but it's expensive. So why not just discard them and get new people? Like send them on their way. They catch diseases. They your, they... your ancestor narrates this stuff too, and it's really fun because he's like what an interesting voice that guy has. Yeah, but some of the stuff he'll say when you throw people out. Oh. I don't like him, man. He's like, oh, uh, oh what is it? Uh, one of the quotables. He's like, you know, uh, uh, this world has no place for, for uh, uh, chattel, for weak, weak spirits, broken, left on the road. I'm like, I did that. We did that to them. Like, we did that to them. They came in here fine. We're, We're in like, need hey, of sterner help. stock. That's right. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, dude. The, the thing you find as you play through this game is that, like, a good chunk of these monsters, uh, he basically parented them. Uh, he either transformed them through his depravity, or he literally parented them by sleeping with some sort of crazy monster. Um, and he, like, doesn't feel guilty enough about it. He'll act like he feels guilty, but, like, I don't know, man. It's a Some of the time he's just like, it's gross. Kill it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When Deal with like, my problems. When you crit stuff, he's like, oh, yes. <laughs> There's like a malice behind his voice where he's like, I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm in here fighting, bro. What do you I'm like, yeah, I know. Such yeah, I got it. I got it. <laughs> What's the dazed reeling? Oh yeah, when you get crit. Yeah. Dazed reeling. Uh what is it? Uh, unsturdy of foot. And he clowns on you. He makes fun of you when you get hit. Yeah. And then all your guys, when you get crit, like your whole team gets stressed out. It's like watching, you know, Aaron gets freaking chopped in half, his health bleeding out, and we all are stress meters. I, I reach maximum stress, so I go insane, or I go resolute, which is pretty cool. That's like, always thrilling. Oh my god, yeah, it's really it's good. Virtuous. Yeah. The, the 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 game is like you're losing, everything's bad, and then one of your characters is like, I own this town. And it's like, Dee! and they get like full health, and you're like, we have, we back in it, boy, we back in it, and then everyone gets like rallies. Oh, sorry, yeah, we were just going on this train. Sorry. <laughs> I get that. It just reminded me. Of, I did a run of Darkest Dungeon. I got crit one time. I'm like, okay. Still in this stress, depressed. Like, oh yeah, it it folds really quick. <laughs> the cards fall very quickly. That's that's what I'm saying. That's why you got to bring a clown. You got to bring a jester to. <laughs> You're not stressed at all. The jesters are my favorite. Too. Oh, I love the jester. He's so good. Anyway, that's great. I don't know. I forgot the original question, but thank you for. <laughs> 
We're doing good on time too, you guys. We got like we got like 19 minutes to to talk about all things Doctor Stone and or apparently just games, which I'm I adore. This is great. Yeah. Or other anime. If if y'all had other anime yeah. questions or general questions about that industry. You've been working on any video games you can talk about? Uh, I just oh one just got released. Uh, Ease. I always called it YS, but Ease Nordics. I'm in that game. I play Wraith, um, which is really fun. Yeah, I'm a part of the the Ease franchise. I played that game as a kid on SNES. Cool. So I'm really excited. Yeah, to play to be a part of that world. Um, what's that game like? I haven't got to play it yet. It just came out. No. Oh, it's an RPG. JRPG. Oh, okay, cool. Um, I love JRPGs. Just so you guys know. Um, what about you? Anything? I'm trying to think of, of other game stuff. Yes. Oh, what was it called? Are you in the Gundam that's coming out? Are you in the Gundam? Gundam? I've been in a couple Gundams, but I don't think I'm in the new one. There's a new thing coming, you guys. Anyway, whatever. You might. Uh, <laughs> I'm in a game called uh, Anno Mutationum. Oh, I'm in that. Oh, you're in it too. I'm a bad guy. Nice. Yeah, I'm a bad guy. <laughs> I am the little brother who ran off on his own and has to be rescued. So I'm oh. your damsel in distress. But then I'm also. This is the. First and only time I've ever been paid to do a uh, cowboy voice. Oh. Uh, I'm also the like old man who like runs the the institute or whatever that the main character works for. Dude, you were three things in that game. I think I might be something else too. Yeah, but I forget what the third thing is. I was just the one. Amber probably got tired. She's like, "Rico, just be a uh, be a ninja," and I'm like, "Yeah." I honestly, <laughs> I think I think it was to get me to my minimum. Like, oh. <laughs> Gotcha. Yeah, I wouldn't feel bad. <laughs> I was like, the dexterity of this man. <laughs> the different characters are bruised, beaten, thrown upon the floor. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's the strangest voice, you guys. Sorry. Please, here's the. I mean, I don't know if it's actually worth looking up, but like the announcer, yeah, the announcer for, uh, for Darkest Dungeon, he says the most cryptic, sad crap while you're struggling. <laughs> like, if someone narrated my life like that, I'm like, yeah, dude, let me, like, get me out of here. <laughs> I don't want to go. Um, but you get more treasure if things get dark. I didn't know that. You can snuff out your torch. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you do it right before you win. Yeah. But then sometimes you thought you were just about to win. And then you get the and shaft. Then you, and then you miss. And then the shambler comes out. And it's like, <laughs> you're like, no, we're not ready. We're not ready. <laughs> um, uh, uh, would you have another uh, question on this side before we go back? Anyone? Back? Yeah, yes. What's the favorite show each of you have worked on in your entire career? Favorite show we've worked on? An entire career. I would say uh, uh, Zombieland Saga. That, it also holds my favorite character I've ever played, which is Kotaro Tatsumi. But like you said, ever? Oh, actually, no. I'm going to give it to uh, Grimgar of Ashes and Illusions. Yeah. That's a show. I always choose the shows that people don't really like know too well. Um, not just because, obviously, like, you know, the. it's just funny how some of the affection you have for some things, you know? Grimgar is like a JRPG. It's very uh, sword art online-y. It's like another world, but they don't know who they are in this world that they've come to, which is really cool. You got a sign for that? So cool. <laughs> Suffer not the lame horse, nor the broken man. <laughs> you know, there's like, a, there's like a, a, a relaxed lower lip. <laughs> oh, the dude, old, that one. You got to do something. The old road will take you to hell, but in that gaping abyss... We will find our redemption. Oh, that's like a positive one. Here, Link, can I do one? Yeah. yeah. The match has struck. A blazing star is born. Oh, that's the one where you like, so if you get nervous, uh, you can light all of your torches and just like make it super bright. So all the monsters are like, <laughs> but, but it costs a lot of resources to oh. do that. Oh, I love that voice. That's why it's so <laughs> Yeah. It's when you, oh, you want to do it? It's so you kill a creature. It goes slowly, gently. This is how a life is taken. <laughs> he's weird, you guys. Like, and he's got this weird quality to his voice. Uh, yeah, that's a great one. He's got some quotables, dude. Yeah, my favorites are are the ones where <laughs> he like talks about like his how he used to party at the estate. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that one was pretty good. Oh, this is. A good oh, you got to do that one. Monstrous size has no intrinsic merit. Unless inordinate exsanguination be considered a virtue. Because <laughs> you get like, sometimes they're just big beefy boys, you know what I mean? You're DPSing them down and when they die, it's like, oh, who cares if they're big? That's what he meant to say. Yeah, here's another. <laughs> that was the paraphrase. Prodigious size alone does not dissuade the sharpened blade. Yeah, he has like call, out, call outs for certain characters. Remind, you, remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. That's when your guys go insane. 
That's also one that you can write uh, onto random Reddit uh, videos of people like trying to do a stunt and failing. You can just oh, comment, remind you yourself. Marcus Dungeon quotes. Yeah. <laughs> That's brutal. If you ever want to just like really flex on someone who, who just messed up on Twitter, <laughs> remind yourself that overconfidence is um, a slow and insidious killer. What you got, man? Uh, when is the next season of Black Clover? When is the next season of Black Clover, Aaron? I thought we ran out of, of suits of carts. I thought, it was, I thought it was done. Oh, you know, <laughs> I was playing a game that has a fifth suit. It was the stars. There was a, a star suit. So maybe when they go to space, maybe they'll do Black Clover Space Age. That's my vote. Yeah. I, I that would be the worst combo. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I don't know where they're headed next. I don't read the manga, actually, on that one. I know story points of where, where things are headed, but yeah. I know the mobile game came out to much acclaim. So people are loving the mobile game, and usually when an anime has something like that, that's how oh Silk Song got a uh, got a rating, which means that means it's going to be coming out at least within maybe like six months. So the the sequel to Hollow Knight. Oh yeah, yeah. Cool. I'm like oh they got a rating. Anyway, so that was a side note thing. But yeah, uh, sorry. I don't know. <laughs> and the questions, you guys, we got a glimmering. Yes. Um, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I sorry I didn't know beforehand, but Kotaro, uh, uh, Kazanjiren only. Oh my god, I love the, the meme of getting the car, go, 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 go. Like, fantastic. I loved it so much. Thanks. Um, do you, like, you get the ad limbo for that? Like, are you allowed to do that? Or is it all descriptive, everything you said? Yeah, I would do one for, one, my rule always for acting, when I'm, uh, especially when I'm, it has to happen with a comfortable group of people to unleash, unleash your, your weird. So, like, um, I do one for them, and I do one for me, and I was working with Jade, who is, uh, you know, we have a tight turnaround for things, but uh, after we did a take of that, where I did it closer to the, the Japanese, I was like, uh, can I please do one for me? And so I did that. And the, the, the go, 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 yeah, 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 the yeah, 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 that comes from uh, competitive gamers that I observed over here in Arlington at the uh, eSports <laughs> arena, because I used to host for, uh, well, I still do for Dallas Fuel, for our Overwatch competitive team. And it's these young 12-year-old kids making millions of dollars going, go, 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 yeah, 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 go, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, I'm putting it in the I'm putting it in the anime. So it made it in. I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Go, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Push, 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 push. I still do it. When I'm trying to get Sarah to get in the car faster. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go, 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 go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Slowly close the door. Slowly. Gently. This is how I just anyway. Oh uh, yeah, thank you, man. That show ironically has got me so much work. People like quote like, hey, so can you do something like this? I'm like, uh, maybe. <laughs> that but that was written, that role was written for Miyano Mamoru, who is the uh, contestably number one voice actor in Japan. He's very, very good. Um, and just has so much fun with it. So it does drain every last bit of mana that I have, but it's great. It's great, good, great. Uh -huh. we had one over. Yeah, Sorry. so uh Grimgar. Yeah. Is there any reason a season two never happened? Dude, it like any anime, you know what I mean? Sometimes, uh, there, I have the graph, the, the novels, the, the, I'm sorry, the, um, yeah, the, the novels, my bad. Yes, yes, the, the, um, it doesn't have animation in it, though, it's just like, it's just the book, I guess, the light novel. Yeah. Light novel, thank you. Light novels, and man, the story's good. Uh, it, it initially was prompted as an anime that was a vehicle for music, which was interesting. Yeah, that's what I, but like, the animation was gorgeous, the story was good. Holy cow, man. Uh, that's where actually the first one of the first shows I worked with Justin Reiner on, who plays my healer in that show, Monato, he also plays Midoriya in My Hero Academia. Um, all that, that whole crew, man, were people that like, it felt like a really cool team of people who I was working with, and I felt very close to it. So, yeah, um, it's one of those things, man, where you get, uh, what's the other one, Sarah, at the end is like, really great show. It's like, where's the next season? It's like, crickets, you know what I mean? So, but there are a lot of really wonderful shows out, and sometimes I think there's just so many animation studios just hustling, you know what I mean? Every time a new Demon Slayer movie comes out or something, you know, it's like, well, uh, you know what I mean? We're probably not going to get <laughs> the thing. But, um, yeah, I hope. I always, every once in a while, I'll Google it just to see. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's great because, like, one of my first conventions, they were doing a promo for Grimgar. And they gave out, like, free posters and everything. Dude, I adore that show. The I art was it. gorgeous. It was awesome. And I got to play a thief. I love rogues, dude. Rogues are my favorite. Um, but, anyway. Yeah, that's a bummer. Nice, but well, you never know. Like stranger things have happened. Just got a new fairy tale coming. So yeah. yeah. Oh. Uh, I was just gonna ask. Um, have you ever played a Souls game? Yes. 
Uh, I've never beaten a Souls game. <laughs> I've also never beaten the first boss of a Souls game. <laughs> it's a gratifying feeling. You have to earn it, dude. I can imagine that it would be. It's, yeah. Yeah. It, 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 like every, my first Souls that I beat was Elden Ring. I've played many Souls games, but the first one I actually played, it took me being with a friend just, and we went full strength build like idiots. Uh, it was very, very fun. Super slow. Oh, dude. But when I hit, when you connect, like literally it's like, miss, miss. You connect, the help boss's health just goes, <laughs> like, come on. Wait, that sounds so fun. Oh, dude, but like you got to connect. That's the hardest part. Because like your stamina, we had nothing. I had nothing. And we had one skill called Bloodhound Step. It's like you get these different uh, abilities that allow you to like, mo it's a mobility thing that lets you kind of teleport. So my whole thing was let the boss miss, teleport, and then please just stay there long enough for me to hit you. <laughs> uh, that's how we beat the game. But nice. uh, yeah, Bloodborne's really good. This story is so freaking good. But um, yeah, you should try it, man. I'm surprised. I think I might try Bloodborne. It looks grim dark enough. That yeah. I think I think I might have you double digital might buy into it. Did you have a question behind? I'm so sorry. Oh you did? Okay. Yeah. Um over that way. Yeah. Uh, old anime wise. So it's kind of a two-part question. So what's your favorite anime and what anime would you like to see revived and also which one would you want to see revived and add to the voice Uh I thought Drifters was really cool. I don't know if how many people got to see it, but Drifters was like gonna be the next anime and then it just only had one season. Uh, it was people pulled out of various points of our world's history getting isekai cool. um, into the same world to sort of form a dream team against, I think, Big like, uh, it was heavenly bureaucracy power plays, basically. Like, like, the angel class was having power plays in this fantasy world. And they were drafting people. Yes, humans? they're oh, drafting wow. the most prominent humans. So I guess it has something in common with the uh, Ragnarok thing. Mm -hmm. It'd also be cool to see Ragnarok get a good adaptation. <laughs> Shots fired. Damn. Uh, but yeah. Is it like if two fate grand order players are like, you know, I'm gonna fight you. It's like fate. Yeah, I was thinking of fate. Oh yeah. Fate. I've been seen it. Yeah, I was explaining the whole entirety of Fate because I hadn't seen it. And so people were like, you don't know Fate Grand Order? And so, yeah, I've learned. I got the, the kind of a, a elevator pitch on, uh, which took about 30 minutes to explain a lot about Because uh, Fate's been happening for a while. Fate Watchers in the room? Yeah. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Oh, your hand is up. My bad. I thought you were. Hello. Um, earlier, you said you played Elden Ring. Yeah. How, how long did it take you to be able to play Melania? Oh, I didn't be Melania. Yeah, no, no, I didn't do that. I just beat the game. I beat that that stupid Elden Beast. And Melania, yeah, we were, and I had not built for that. Huh? She's friend, right? Melania, hey, I mean, it depends how you look at it, but you can fight her. She has really cool weapons and stuff. Yeah. I didn't mind about the beginning of the time. I wasn't able to beat the Elden Beast without it. Really? Yeah. I feel like Elden Beast, I think I glitched it, though, because I got him stuck in a weird spot, and, you know, he does a little swim thing and all this yeah. stuff, and he wouldn't, um, thank you, Bob. Um, he got... <laughs> This is me and uh, Graham. Uh, Felicia Angel, she plays Mona in uh, uh, Genshin. She's um, uh, uh, Toru Hagakure, Invisible Girl in My Hero. I was just hanging out with her this morning and uh, in LA, and she, um, her husband Graham and I play a lot of games together, and we were the ones that sat down with a big-ass, many boxes of pizza, working through Elden Ring. We're like, all right, your turn, your turn. Every time, you know, switch every death, right? And, like, some of those deaths, man, where we're like, freaking, uh, what's the, the, the Godskin duo? When you're slow, it sucks. <laughs> when you're slow. Some some bosses, you can just crush with that build, and that, that game, that's why the game is so fun because like you you put small points to build to a kind of build. There's like a really cool bleed build when the game, first game first came out that was like annihilating everyone, and then they patched it, and everyone's like, no. Um, and they have this dope katana that you can like, like you know, that's a uh, oh rivers of blood. Of course, that's the that's the yeah, the blade. Um, yeah, it, and, and now with the, sorry, I'm like just, I sound like a freaking so Shadow of the Hair Street commercial. Uh, but like, there's so many cool weapons and things in that world. And there's so many things they don't tell you about that world that like, the, the fan base has populated so much of the lore. It's so cool. It's so, so fun to explore that world. Did you play Urtree? Did you play Shadow of uh, the Expansion yet? The DLC? It's real, real hard. <laughs> you come in there thinking you're all cool. They're like, <laughs> 
Yeah. And you're like, wait, what? Extra stuff, so you can actually do enough damage. Right. Because you hit things that you think are going to crush it, and their life just goes like that. And you're like, oh no, <laughs> run away. <laughs> Gotta go. Get on Torrent. Torrent's like, ah, I can't, I can't help you. Um, we only got a couple minutes left, you guys, but yeah, um, any last kind of fadeaway jumpers, or do you have a thought or feeling? Or... We talked a lot about games, you guys. Thank you for all the lovely game questions. Yeah. Aaron and I play a lot of games, so this is refreshing. Mm -hmm. I love it, you guys. It's fantastic. Which I guess maybe no surprise if you're a fan of Doctor Stone as well, because yeah. Oh, I see one. Uh, oh, 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 actually, two. do you mind? Is that okay. We'll get yeah, both yeah. of you. Yeah, yeah. Go, go. You, go. I was just asking, you play Final Fantasy online? You mean fourteen? Yeah. Online was eleven. I did play that. One. Yeah. 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 Yeah.